Hello everyone, welcome back to this series called Finance Current Affairs where we pick up some important financial topics and we discuss them with the help of different questions. So moving on to the first question, but before that, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can be notified about all our upcoming videos. You can also join our Telegram group. The free PDFs of these sessions will be available on that very group. So the first question says, RBI has introduced an internal ombudsman mechanism for select NBFCs. Which of the following NBFCs need to appoint an internal ombudsman as per this mechanism? So recently in RBI's notification, it was notified that certain select NBFCs have to appoint an internal ombudsman. So let's discuss that notification and then we'll come back to this question. So what it says is that on 15th of November, that notification was released, which says that the internal ombudsman mechanism needs to be followed by certain NBFCs. So this very concept of introducing the internal ombudsman for NBFCs was also talked about in the statement on developmental and regulatory policies, which comes up with monetary policy statement. So October major monetary policy statement ke saath statement on development and regulatory policies IP. तब बात की गई थी कि इंटरनल ओम्बर्समेन मेकैनिज्म लाना चाहिए एनबीएफसीज के लिए, सो आरबीआई ने वो मेकैनिज्म इंट्रोड्यूस किया है। टॉकिंग अबाउट इंटरनल ओम्बर्समेन, सो इंटरनल ओम्बर्समेन इस बेसिकली अ पर्सन हु इस गोइंग टू डील विद योर कस्टमर ग्रीवेंसेस हैंडलिंग द कस्टमर कंप्लेंट्स, सो � so if any complaint comes to an NBFC related to any service rendered by them and the customers are not satisfied, if that NBFC is not able to address that problem, then the complaint will reach the internal ombudsman who is the senior official going to handle that entire grievance handling mechanism. So which NBFCs are covered under this mechanism? So the following NBFCs have to appoint an internal ombudsman. So ये senior official जो customer की grievances handle करेगा, ये कुछ NBFCs को appoint करना होगा. Which NBFCs have to do so? The deposit taking NBFCs having ten or more branches and the non deposit taking NBFCs with this much of asset size, that is five thousand crore or more, and which have the public customer interface. So जो deposit taking NBFCs हैं जिनकी दस या उससे ज़्यादा branches हैं और जो नॉन डिपॉजिट टेकिंग एनबीएफसी से जिनका 5000 करोड़ से ज्यादा का असेट साइज है पब्लिक कस्टमर इंटरफेस है इन सब टाइप की एनबीएफसी को मैंडेटरीली इंटरनल ओम्बर्समेंट अपॉइंट करना होगा एंड आरबीआई हैज गिवन देम अ टाइम ऑफ सिक्स मंथ्स टू अदर टू दिस डायरेक्शंस सो सिक्स मंथ्स में उनको ये मैकेनिज्म को इंप्लीमेंट करना है there are certain एनबीएफसीज व्हिच हैव बीन एक्सक्लूडेड फ्रॉम दिस वेरी मैकेनिज्म सो व्हिच एनबीएफसीज आर एक्सक्लूडेड the following are excluded, which include your standalone primary dealers, NBFC infrastructure finance companies, infrastructure debt fund NBFCs, non-banking finance company account aggregators, the, then the NBFCs which are under the corporate insolvency resolution process, which are under liquidation or which have only captive customers. So, yes, are NBFCs excluded and which have mechanism implement implemented. Otherwise, all deposit and non-deposit uh, taking NBFCs which are adhering to these thresholds, they have to appoint an internal ombudsman. Okay. Any NBFC which is covered by this direction shall continue to have an IEO for a period of three years after the company falls below these thresholds, below the thresholds. So, jo bhi NBFCs in thresholds ke under aati hai, unhe teen saal ke liye internal ombudsman ko appoint karna hooga. Moving ahead now to the appointment of the IEO, who can be appointed as an IEO? What's the eligibility criteria? So there are some conditions which need to be specified, which need to be met in order to make a person eligible for becoming an IO. So what are prerequisites? Hai? First of all, the person shall be a retired or serving officer, not below the rank of deputy general or some other equivalent in the financial sector body, uh, NBFC bank, having minimum of seven years experience of working as banking, financial regulator, in the area of consumer protection or non-banking finance. So what this criteria says, it says that the person should be a retired or a serving officer whose rank is not below that of a deputy journal. Ya fir wo person financial regulatory body ya kisi bank NBFC mein work karta ho aur 7 years ka experience ho 
बैंकिंग में फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर रेगुलेशन में सुपरविजन में या किसी नॉन बैंकिंग फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन में ओके सो बोथ दीज क्राइटेरिया नीड टू बी मेट टू मेक अ पर्सन एलिजिबल टू बिकम एन आई then that person should not have worked or be working in NBFC where appointed as an IO. so जिस NBFC बी एफ सी में पर्सन को इंटरनल और बच्चमैन की तरह अपॉइंट किया जा रहा है वहाँ उसने काम नहीं किया होना चाहिए और वो काम वहाँ ना कर रहा हो उसके अलावा किसी और एन बी एफ सी में रेलिवेंट एक्सपीरियंस है तो आप अपॉइंट कर सकते हो बट सेम एन बी एफ सी में जहाँ का उन्हें आई ओ बनाया जा रहा है वहाँ पर वर्क एक्सपीरियंस विल नॉट बी काउंटेड मतलब वहाँ का पर्सन होगा तो आप उसको अपॉइंट नहीं कर सकते हो then the age limit has also been specified not above seventy years so up to seventy years is allowed beyond that if the person has an age then he will not be appointed as an IU and based on the number of complaints an NBFC or a particular branch is getting NBFCs can appoint more than one IU as well कि जहाँ पे workload ज़्यादा है complaints customers की ज़्यादा है वहाँ और भी ombudsman appoint किए जा सकते हैं but one is mandatory moving ahead now to the tenure of io so fixed term of not less than 3 years not exceeding 5 years has been specified and the io will not be eligible for reappointment or extending the tenure so jo bhi internal ombudsman hai wo fir se reappoint nahi ho sakta us nbfc mein now what's the main role of an io as i have already told you they are to improve the grievance handling mechanism the customer complaints handling them so the io shall deal only with the complaints that have already been examined by nbfc but not but have been partly or wholly rejected by nbfc nbfc ko unki services mein financial services mein koi deficiency hai isse related complaint aayi nbfc ne us complaint ko partly ya wholly reject kar diya address nahi kiya us complaint ko us customer ki grievance ko to wo sari complaints pahunchti hai fir io ke paas jo ne handle karta hai In other words, IO will not handle complaints directly from customers or members of public. Directly, कम और जो है IO तक complaint नहीं जाएगी. पहले NBFC अपने platform पे उसको address करने की कोशिश करेगी. वो नहीं करते तो हमें IO तक वो वाली complaint report करनी है. So this was all about this mechanism. So coming back to our question, which of these NBFCs need to appoint an IO. So we just discuss the deposit taking NBFCs with this much branches and non-deposit taking with this much asset size. So both of these have to appoint. NBFC infrastructure finance company and account aggregators have been excluded from from the same. So first and second have to appoint. Answer is option C. This was all about the first question. Now moving on to the next question. It says. What is the objective behind the PIDF scheme operationalized by Reserve Bank from Jan 2021 onwards? So this scheme was introduced by RBI, and recently a notification came up which provided a an update about this PIDF scheme. Okay, so here we have to answer that what is the objective of this scheme? So if you are aware about the full form of this scheme, then on then also you can answer this question. So let's discuss a bit about this scheme first. PIDF stands for the Payments Infrastructure Development Fund. So, what is it? A separate fund has been created, which will focus on uh, developing the payments infrastructure in India. Now, suppose we go shopping and we have to make a payment through the debit card which we have. Okay, so uh, there is a need of having the necessary infrastructure, the computer, the machinery, the card processing device. Through which the payment will be processed, the bill will be made. We will make the payment. It will get deposited in their account, and whole procedure will be carried out. Okay, so that the payment gets made. So that payment infrastructure is needed, and thus uh, the fund, uh, the objective of this fund is to develop that payment infrastructure in India. So this was operationalized by RBI in Jan 2021. it subsidizes the deployment of point of sale infrastructure both physical and digital modes in tier 3 to 6 and northeastern states of country so jo bhi tier 3 to tier 6 mein jo bhi hamari cities aati hain aur jo northeastern states hai wahan pe hamara payment infrastructure develop ho both physical as well as jo bhi digital payments kar rahi hain humne upi wagera ke through qr codes ka use karke un sab payment related infrastructure ko develop karna is fund ka objective hai okay especially in tier 3 to tier 6 centers me and to increase the payments acceptance infrastructure which comprise of multiple payment acceptance devices so alag alag type ke infrastructure equipments chahiye un sab ki development ho un uh, wo log jo isko deploy kar rahe hain unhe subsidy dena wo sab is fund ke through hota hai 
So the banks, non-banks, the regist registered under the scheme, they commit region-wise deployment targets, submit the deployment statistics, and they can claim the subsidy for devices they are basically deploying. So uh, these banks or non-banks, they all set their targets that we will deploy so much infrastructure, then they have deployed how much infrastructure they have deployed, and they share the related statistics, wo share karte hai, and then they can claim the subsidy through this very fund which is specifically created to develop the payment infrastructure in India. So if I move back to the question, the objective of this scheme is to increase the payment acceptance infrastructure in India. So answer is option D. So uh, if I talk about the contribution to this fund, who makes the contribution to this fund? It's not only RBI who contributes, but the authorized card networks and the card issuing banks also contribute some amount to this fund. So this fund RBI, card networks or card issuing banks ki contribution se bana hai. Recently, its corpus bar ke 614 crores hua. Okay, so what's the corpus of this fund right now? It's 614 crores where the majority of contribution is of RBI. That's around 250 crores. Then of card issuing banks, which is around 210 crores and remaining of authorized card networks, which totals out to be around 614 crores. Okay, so ye paisa India mein payment infrastructure develop karne mein use hoga. Moving ahead to the number of accept payment accepting devices deployed under this scheme till September 2021. You don't have to uh, memorize the data. It's just for your understanding that I'm telling you that this fund is being utilized a lot to deploy the payment infrastructure in India. Okay, so you can see this much of physical devices, this much of dig digital devices have actually been deployed under this very scheme. Your, um, we process the payments at the point of sale, we make the card payments, so physical devices are needed. Then to make digital payments, QR based payments like UPI, QR, Bharat QR, all that is needed. So there, those are digital options. So both of them have been developed, both of those devices have been deployed using this fund. Moving to the next question now, the last question, it says, which regulatory body has proposed to tighten the rules on how companies can spend cash raised through IPOs. So these days we are seeing a lot of companies going for IPOs, the initial public offerings where they are making people to subscribe for their shares they are issuing in the markets. Okay, it's basically a means for these companies to raise the funding. But what is happening? When through IPOs the companies are raising the funding, they are utilizing that money in different risky projects. Okay, they are taking different kinds of investments. So there was need of some rules to protect the customers from the risk these companies are taking, utilizing the money raised through IPOs. So recently, a regulatory body has proposed certain rules in order to deal with the cash spent which is raised through IPO. So the company cash raised karti hai IPOs ki through, usko kaha spend karna hai, usse related kuch rules, regulations hone chahiye. Taki investors ke right protected rahe. So SEBI is the regulatory body just the isse related which rules proposed kiye hai. SEBI is the regulatory body which has proposed certain rules related to that, related to this very thing of spending the cash raised through IPO. And these uh, proposed rules are open for public comments till the end of this month. And based on what comments come, then the final rules will be out. The final regulations will be out. So which regulatory body has the power to do so? It's SEBI. Okay, it's the watchdog for our securities market. So talking a bit about these rules, SEBI has proposed to tighten the rules on how companies spend cash raised through IPO. Till 30th November, public comments are being sought on this set of rules. So what do these rules propose? Let's discuss that. Ek ek karke hum discuss karte hai ki ye rules kis cheez pe focus kar rahe aur ye rules ko kyu introduce karne ka uh, proposal aya hai by SEBI's end. From the SEBI's end. So first proposal is to limit a maximum of, a maximum of 35% of proceeds for acquisitions and unspecified strategic investments unidentified in the objects of the offer. So when you are uh, um, going for an IPO, okay, uh, you issue a prospectus so that the people subscribe to your shares. So when uh, you are um, Going for an IPO, you are making an offer and you are not mentioning where you will utilize that money. You are not mentioning that we will utilize this money in acquisition or in this very strategic investment. Then there is a limit 
that you cannot spend more than 35 percent of the proceeds in these investments. So, अगर आपको IPO में पैसा रेस करा है जो उसका यूज आपने किसी एक्विजिशन किसी कंपनी को एक्वायर करने में किसी असेट की एक्विजिशन में किसी स्ट्रेटेजिक इन्वेस्टमेंट में करना है जिसके बारे में आपने अपने ऑफर में नहीं बताया था लोगों को उस केस में आप 35 परसेंट से ज्यादा वो प्रोसीड्स इन इन्वेस्टमेंट्स के लिए यूज नहीं कर सकते बट इफ यू हैव स्पेसिफाइड इन दी ऑफर दैट यू विल बी यूजिंग दिस मनी फॉर दिस एक्विजिशन और फॉर दिस इन्वेस्टमेंट देन यू कैन डू सो अगर आपने ऑफर में बता दिया था तो आप 35% से ज्यादा यूज कर सकते हो प्रोसीड्स बट इफ यू हैवेंट मेंशन देन यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू यूटिलाइज द कैश रेज थ्रू आईपीओ टू एन एक्सटेंट ऑफ मोर देन 35% इन दीस एक्विजिशंस और दीस स्ट्रेटजिक इन्वेस्टमेंट सो एज मच एज 35% ऑफ द आईपीओ इशू कैन बी यूज्ड फॉर इनऑर्गेनिक ग्रोथ इनिशिएटिव्स और जनरल कॉर्पोरेट पर्पस आप मैक्सिमम ऑफ 35 परसेंट ऑफ दी आईपीओ का जो अमाउंट है वो इन ऑर्गेनिक ग्रोथ इनिशिएटिव्स और जनरल कॉर्पोरेट पर्पसेस के लिए यूज कर सकते हो व्हेन आई टॉक अबाउट द इन ऑर्गेनिक ग्रोथ इट मींस दैट यू आर गोइंग फॉर सम काइंड ऑफ एन एक्विजिशन यू आर एक्वायरिंग सम फर्म यू आर मर्जिंग विद सम फर्म एंटरिंग इनटू अ वेंचर विद सम फर्म ओके सो इट्स बेसिक द बेसिक ऑब्जेक्टिव हियर इज टू एक्सपैंड योर मार्केट एक्वायर द एक्जिस्टिंग कस्टमर और एक्वायर द एक्जिस्टिंग मार्केट्स Okay, so technology companies often raise funds for expanding new markets, acquiring customers. That are some of the objectives of funding through the inorganic growth. Okay, so आप existing firms को acquire वगैरह करते हो, वो सब इसके अंदर आता है. Now coming to the second proposal. The second proposal is that the I uh, for the IPOs of company where there are no identifiable promoters, divestment of stake by the significant shareholders. should be capped at 50% of the pre issue holding so prior to issuing the securities to a larger public if the firm does not have the identified promoters then if there are some significant shareholders by significant shareholders i mean those who have a stake of more than 20% so if they need to divest their share then it their divestment will be capped at 50% of the pre issue holding so unke paas jitne bhi shares hain prior to the issue उसका 50 परसेंट उन्हें होल्ड करके रखना है बाकी दे कैन डाइवेस्ट ओके फर्दर फॉर सिग्निफिकेंट शेयर होल्डर सेलिंग थ्रू ऑफर फॉर सेल दे नीड टू रिमेन देयर रिमेनिंग पोस्ट इशू शेयर होल्डिंग शैल बी लॉक्ड इन फॉर अ पीरियड ऑफ सिक्स मंथ्स फ्रॉम द डेट ऑफ अलॉटमेंट इन एन आई नाउ देयर आर सम एक्सिस्टिंग शेयर होल्डर्स ऑफ द कंपनी फॉर एग्जाम्पल द एंकर इन्वेस्टर्स हु आर एंकर इन्वेस्टर्स सी बिफोर अ कंपनी मेक्स एन आई इट gets its shares subscribed to certain institutional investors in order to make in order to jazz up their issue in order to increase their reputation so that more investors invest in so anchor investors hote hain bade bade institutional investors jinko aap apni securities issue karte ho ipo se pehle jab ye bade bade investors aapki companies mein invest karte hain to baki investors attract hote hain aapki company mein invest karne mein okay so when there are numerous investors to whom you have already issued the shares of the company when they want to sell their shares in a ipo that's an ipo of a sale so it's the sale of existing shares of the company by, held by promoters or major investors to the public so jab promoters ya major investors company ke apne shares ko existing shares ko sell kar rahe hain that's an offer for sale usually they offer for sale their uh, shares through the primary market ipo or they do so in the secondary market as well so if they have to if they are selling their shares through the ipo okay the shares which still remain post issue share holding they should be logged in a for, for a period of 6 months from the date of allotment in an ipo so wo apne kuch securities to offer kar rahe hain sale ke liye ipo mein remaining jo unki post issue share holding hai wo unhe 6 mahine tak rakhni hai us firm mein okay then coming to the last proposal at least 50% of the anchor investors should be those who are willing to stay invested for at least 90 days existing uh, as per the recent norms it's just 30 days that they have to remain invested for 30 days now it they are making it to be 90 days so at least 50% anchor investors ko 90 days ke liye kam se kam invested rehna chahiye us firm ke securities mein okay as we just discuss anchor investors are the institutional investors who are invited to subscribe the shares before the ipo opens so that it jazzes up the popularity of the issue jab bade bade banks bade bade uh, mutual fund companies aap dekh rahe ho ki is company mein invest kar rahe hain to jab uska ipo aayega aap bhi wahan invest karne mein interested hoge roping in the anchor investors gives a lot of comfort to the small investors 
because it indicates the faith shown by the institutional investors. All right. So this was all about these proposals. Now talking about why SEBI has uh, come up with these proposals. SEBI Q introduce kar raha hai ye rules ya Q introduce karna cha raha hai ye rules. The basic objective is to protect the small shareholders. Okay. SEBI proposes these rules because the company spent cash raised through IPO and quickly big investors exit. A move aimed at protecting smaller shareholders seeking to buy into flurry of listings by new technology companies. Now various new technology firms are entering into IPOs. Various anchor investors invest in these firms and when uh, people also subscribe seeing the popularity, they later on exit. So in order to protect the small shareholders of uh, making sure that their investment is good, if they are not investment in a lot of a risky project, these rules are proposed. Recently, we have seen various companies going for IPOs. Okay. Current fiscal year has witnessed a rush of public share sales. Especially, there are certain startups which are loss-making startups, uncon having unconventional technology-driven business and they are going for IPOs. People are investing a lot. And by investing in these firms, people are taking too much of the risk. Okay, they, they are not aware about whether these firms are going to utilize their money in lucrative projects or not. Alag -alag jaga pe ye company apna ye paisa invest kar deti hai. Agar 35% ki cap nahi hogi, wo sara paisa kisi risky investment mein invest kar rahe hai. Then the customer's money, is, the investor's money is at stake. So in order to reduce the level of risk, these rules have been proposed. Investors will know where their money is being used and it will bring more accountability. So ye sab reasons hai ye new rules propose karne ke. That's all for today's session. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.